Welcome back to Aquadine, folks. Cameron, what are you doing just standing there? <laughs> hey, I was talking with a friend who wants to deliver this to you. Really? A letter for me? Who is it from? Sorry, but I promise not to tell. You'll have to find out yourself. Well, I just saw Chow running away from this direction, so it's obviously... C yeah, right, it can't be him, right? Yeah, of course it wouldn't be him. The one who's running away from Cameron. Later that day, Jonathan and Chow meet up a cloud company as they wait for Robin's return. The dragon would like some coffee, please. Why do you talk like a barbarian, but you call yourself a dragon? Very strange. The dragon doesn't talk like a barbarian. The dragon can call himself whatever he wants. What about the barbarian? How dare you mock for Trek? <laughs> I can't believe you're arguing with an old man, Chow. That old man is a worthy opponent, but the dragon will not concede. The dragon's prize is at stake. Stop calling yourself by a mythical creature. They don't exist! Yep, and we have two unfamiliar guests. Looks like your only grandchild has returned. Gee, I wonder who he could be. Welcome home, Robin. Or should I say, Cell. And yep, more people have known about this. Yep, has no idea what's going on. Jonathan is liking this every bit. What were you thinking? How many times are you going to sprout out all this information? Wasn't hiding my identity your idea? Blonde boy was very clever, just like you. The Safarians of all people figured out my identity before any of our locals. May as well just tell everyone I'm Cell, me, the guy who gives the most boring tours ever. And just like that, we're here. <laughs> and they'll probably be like, don't need to hide that, Robin, you know? Whoa, the whip transformed to a completely different person. Still hiding behind that mask, huh? I don't blame you. Please follow me and watch your step. Cell helps Jonathan and Chow on into his gondola before they slowly drift away. How are you both doing today? Are there any specific sites you'd like to visit? We'll leave that up to you. May I recommend the Bridge of Sorrow? <laughs> it's a very popular site for traveling couples. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Aww. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Watch it, Robin. I know who you are now, but I'm and I'm not afraid to spread the word. Jonathan is quite the gentleman, isn't he? Gondola tours are a splendid choice for spending quality time together, especially for dates and honeymoons. <laughs> Enacting revenge. Yeah, interesting question. It's because of Alyssa. Ever since she brought up that stupid idea of doing concerts again, I've been worried about her. She gave you a ticket to go see it, right? Yeah, and I bet you're the one who prepared this note. What do you want to talk about? I want to set a few things straight since it's obviously you and Alyssa have gotten pretty close. Did she ever tell you why she stopped singing? No, but we can put the piece together as to the cause of it. I only heard they moved here because of her dad's business. Yes, that is definitely correct. Actually, it was because her mum passed away. Her previous concert was late last year when it happened. Wow. Alyssa's mum promised her that she'd come watch even though she was always busy with work. She managed to take some time to go watch, but wasn't feeling well. Even then, she kept her promise. Things were going well, and of course, Alyssa was really happy that she could come. But partway through the concert, Alyssa's mum collapsed. Alyssa cancelled it and stayed by her mum's side the whole time when the ambulance rushed to the hospital. She died from a heart attack the next morning. Since then, I was sure Alyssa would never take the stage again. So the real reason they moved away was because it was hard on them to keep living in Cephalo without her. Everyone wished they could have done something for her, and that's probably how Alyssa feels about you now. Elizabeth, I feel like I understand you a little better now. While you always try to help me, you're also coping with your own loss at the same time. It must have been hard, definitely. Why are you telling me this? It's too personal to share on a whim if you ask me. I've been worried about her ever since she was traumatized. I tried to talk her out of scene again, but she won't budge. She didn't just give you a ticket to see her concert. The entire concert is for you. What? What? Are you telling me she's doing all of this to help me pay for my mom's hospital bills? You should know by now how she is. Whenever Alyssa sets her mind on something, she'll do whatever it takes to see it through. If you really care about her, you have to stop that concert. You're the one who can save her from her suffering again. She only has eyes for you after all. 
Wow, I thought Jonathan was being very heinous towards us with her, his intentions of following us and trying to stop us from all this, but it seems like he is trying to stop us, but in a different way. Jonathan walks away after sharing the story with Cell, hoping Elizabeth will find happiness in the end. The following morning, Robin is having breakfast with his grandpa as he gazes aimlessly at the television. His mind is so lost that he even occasionally forgot, forgets to eat his meal. It appears Margaret is interviewing Elizabeth again. <laughs> Cartoon movie with cat and mouse coming soon. So excited. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. Exactly, Grandpa. Friends and family care for one another, so therefore they share burdens. Hey there, Four Eyes. How are you? Sleepy. Guess that makes the two of us. Wake up, cuz Elizabeth is gonna show off her new song. That's great. I haven't even listened to her old ones. Me neither. Yo, better get on that if you want to jump on the hype track. Diana, we're not the same as you. You're the only one who's like this. No, she's thinking of another secret. She thinks that, you know, Four Eyes and Anya are together, you know. Not that identity problem, but... Not problem, but identity secret, but Anya. Later that day, Alfred is in the middle of dusting off some furniture until he notices someone approaching the front door. Master Charlie, it appears we have an unexpected visitor. Cell has arrived. What? What does he want from me? Probably your door... No! Not in that way! Quick, take Elizabeth and escape through the back. I'll hold him off even as long. What do you think we're gonna do then, you idiot? And the only butt that you've ever had. That is a very blunt but very effective way of pulling that, Alfred. But we're no demon lord. Oh dear. Doing so will bring, to, will bring rise to an army of minions, of us granting you the power to dominate the world. Of course, I never thought he, even he would believe that nonsense. Will he be okay? Oh, I assure you, Master Charlie's will be alright. What brings you here anyway? I want to speak with you. Is that so? Let's move to the dining room, shall we? I do owe you a bit of an apology due to my entertainment. <laughs> Alfred leads Cell to the dining room so they can continue their conversation. I love this butler. I think a lot of butler characters are very underrated in different entertainment sectors within the world. Once Cell is seated, Alfred heads to the kitchen to grab a homemade cake from the fridge. Care for a slice of strawberry cheesecake. It was prepared by Lady Elizabeth herself. Really? In that case, I would love a slice. Was it really? And did you put anything in it that could harm Robin or Cell? Cell accepts the plate and cuts the tip of a cake with his fork before trying a piece. This might be the best cheesecake I've ever had. I'm glad to see even you can be honest at times. Lady Elizabeth has been staying up late to, lately to perfect this recipe for a certain someone. So what do you want to discuss? It's Elizabeth's concert. I learned about what happened to her mom and why she decided to resume her career. I see. Did Lady Elizabeth tell you that? No, but someone named Jonathan did. I can understand why he's worried. Before Lady Elizabeth decides to resume her career, she spoke with her father regarding her concerns about your situation. What did they talk about? Charles steps in with a genuine look of concern after overhearing their conversation. Elizabeth asked me to help out with your mum's hospital bills, but I decided not to. The reason why I refused to help wasn't because I hated you or anything. It was because... I had trouble moving on. My wife passed away recently, and it was a pretty hard loss for us. I decided it would be best for us to move away after things settled down. Surely my wife would have wanted that too for Elizabeth's sake. The public thinks you two moved away because of business reasons. Was there an excuse to protect Elizabeth? Yeah, I hid Laura's funeral from the media to keep them from pitying Elizabeth. For once, I agree with your decision. Having so much attention will always serve as a double-edged sword. Does Elizabeth blame herself for her mum's death? Laura fell during her concert after all. Elizabeth thought if she convinced her mum not to push herself, she'd still be alive. My poor girl felt so depressed that she couldn't even sing anymore. What a terrible burden to live with. Things were looking up when we moved to Aquadon, and even I could tell that she liked hanging around with you. I just didn't want to admit it. But when Elizabeth talked to me about your problem, it was like a rude awakening for me. I realized other people are also struggling with similar situations just like us. And I was afraid if Elizabeth tried to help you, she reminded of those painful memories when we mourned. But it's for different people though. Not your own family, but people that you care about. Not as painful, but still horrifically painful. Those who know about Elizabeth's past are concerned this might happen. Maybe it'd be best if I convinced her to cancel the concert. No! Don't do it! 
Sailor's shocked by Charlie's disapproval, especially after learning his stance in the matter. Alfred, on the other hand, doesn't seem phased. Because of you, my daughter found the courage to take the stage again and move on from that depression. But look at me. I'm pathetic. I was too afraid to help you, because I thought memories of my wife would haunt me all over again. So remains speechless as he can't find the right words to say. Sometimes, there just isn't words to say. All he can do is sympathize with him as he's reminded of his own family struggles. Even though I always pride myself as her father, Elizabeth is the one who always tries to help others. The one who's still clinging onto the past is me. That's why I'm asking you to support her, so she can finally move on and make happier memories. How could I possibly refuse after you said all that? I promise I'll go to her concert. Good. Now go get out of that house. <laughs> I mean it. Thank you for having me. I'll be on my way. So he heads to the front door so he can prepare for his next tour. Alfred is about to see him out, but he also has a few words to say. So how does it feel to surrender your daughter to the Demon Lord? Surrender my daughter? <laughs> I won't surrender Elizabeth to anyone. This is only a truce, you hear? Still, I never see you open up to a younger male before like you have today. Alfred, take me to the hospital. We're paying a visit. As you wish, sir. I think we know who they're visiting. As I thought. Tori. Despite her deteriorating vision, she can still appreciate the sunset just moments before it disappears. A few door knocks sound catches Tori by surprise before a pair of unexpected visitors enter the room. Hello, Tori. I apologize for coming unannounced, but it's a pleasure to see you again. Alfred, it's good to hear from you again. It can't be. I never would have thought Sel's mother was you, Tori. That voice. Is it you, Charlie's? Wait, if you are Sel's mother, then that must mean Sel is actually Robin. That is correct, sir. We received permission from Captain Hamal to visit this time. However, Robin does not have the best reputation. Once someone learns his secrets, the game is pretty much over. It must be one of the reasons why their family denied visits for the longest time. But Cell is disguised, right? I've seen him as Cell, but I don't think I've met him when he's Robin. You have. You certainly have. Master Charles, you've already met Robin before back when Lady Elizabeth invited a number of her friends to the mansion. Do you recall that one lad with a glass she pointed a gun towards? <laughs> oh yes, that pathetic wimp. I forgot about that guy. You pointed a gun at my son? How could you? Hold on, I can explain. The gun wasn't even real. <laughs> but it certainly looked real. You nearly scared him to death. It was just a water gun. You know me, Tori. I used to pull pranks like that all the time, remember? Yes, that sounds very much like you, Charlie. For better or worse, I'm glad you haven't changed. Just don't do that again, okay? Sorry, I can get carried away sometimes when it comes to my little girl. Your daughter actually paid me a visit during her date. She's a very sweet girl. D-d-d-d-d-d-d-date? Oh, you didn't know about that? He does, but continues to deny it. Still amusing, I must say. I mean, now that I think about it, Robin really does remind me of Griffin back when we were younger. I'm sure he'll become a fine man too. It's been so long since we last met. I've missed you both very much. Yeah, it has. But friends have some catching up to do as they reminisce more on their fonder memories. Oh my, what a... What a horrific sight to see your mother like that, in a very negative way, morbid way, a worrying way. Robin, Mum, what happened? My breathing problem suddenly escalated, so they had me wear an ostium mask. Sorry to worry you, Robin. It's okay, you don't have to talk anymore. Mr. Rhodes and Alfred kindly stopped by earlier this evening. Mr. Rhodes paid off the rest of our bills and said that you must go to Elizabeth's concert. Wow, what a kind man. Robert is speechless by the fact that someone else had to bail them out of their financial problems. He looks ashamed of himself. Sorry that I couldn't pay off the bills on my own. I'll go thank them later and offer whatever services I can. Don't apologize. You did your best. And I'm very proud of you. Have fun at the concert. Just get some rest, okay? Robin stays by his mum's side until she falls asleep for the night. Yikes. And here we are in the underwater dream on Elizabeth's perspective. You wish to see me? The undying dances around the little. 
I never imagined one of my biggest fans could be such a little fella like you. I love you. Those words catch Elizabeth by surprise. It's not the same voice she heard from her other dream, but it's one she recognizes. It belongs to a woman. The Undying disappears shortly after, leaving her stunned. No one else is around aside from a few stray fish and undines. Elizabeth cranks a smile and looks up at the ocean surface. I love you too. Ah. She closes her eyes and slowly fades away. What a lovely dream to be presented by. The day of the concert finally comes, and Elizabeth's fans are waiting right outside of a grand opera house to get their seats. <sighs> the line is longer than I thought. Duh! It's Elizabeth's comeback concert, you know? That just goes to show how hype everyone is. I'm almost envious. There has never been this many people in any of the martial arts tournaments I've participated in. <laughs> now that's a toughie. Do I wa want to watch a celebrity scene or a bunch of guys beat the blank out of each other? Let me know whenever you get one of those tawny things going on, cause I'm root for you. Tournaments? What are you going to do, dance around like those cheerleaders? Hey, that's not a bad idea, I'll cheer for you Cam. I appreciate your support, but not in that way. Thank you all for coming out tonight. It truly means a lot to see so many fans still supporting me after, even after my hiatus. <laughs> even after, even after, even after. I haven't taken the stage in a while, but I'll make it up to you now. With a crowd this large, it would be too difficult for me to spot Robin. But I know that he's watching me somewhere in there. As the first song begins, Elizabeth takes a deep breath and slowly raises her microphone. Just as Elizabeth's about to sing, she becomes stiff and her lips quiver. She obviously knows the lyrics, but they're not coming out. Ouch. No. She can do it. She can do it. No, give her some time. I know she can pull through. This is the song she was seen before her mum was rushed to the hospital. Are you sure you want to sing that song? It's the one you sang when the accident happened. Yeah, but that is exactly why I must sing it. If I cannot complete this song in front of a crowd, I'll never move on. You can do it, Elizabeth. I believe in you. I hope so. Come on, Elizabeth. Come on. You can do it, Elizabeth. It looks like the crowd is stopping. No, what are they doing? The song comes to a close and it's causing a lot of commotion among the audience. Elizabeth is left crying on the stage for the world to see. They stopped? I failed. I'm so sorry, everyone. Don't you dare back away from this, Elizabeth. Wow. Elizabeth looks shocked as she hears the sound of her dad's voice yelling all the way from the spectator's seat. Your mom worked hard every day so she could hear you sing. She wouldn't want you to see you like this, would she? She always wants to watch you shine. So you had a huge responsibility to carry on her dreams. Our dreams. She didn't give up singing because of you. She didn't die because of you. Her legacy is still living inside you. So take the stage in her name and finish that song. See her off with a smile. You hear me? Father. That's right, Elizabeth. We're here to support you. You can do it, Elizabeth. Keep fighting. Keep going, Elizabeth. We're right behind you. What they said. Elizabeth. 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 Don't give up, Elizabeth. I believe in you. Robin. Thank you for inviting me to your concert. Everyone is supporting me and helping me rise again. It's my turn to return the favour. Yes. Come on, let's leave the past traumas behind us and move on to a better future. Forgive me for keeping this a secret. As you now know, I've been on a hiatus for the past few months due to coping with a terrible loss. Promises were made to perform again, so I intend to keep them. This song is not only dedicated to my late mother, but for everyone supporting me. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Ah. As the staff plays the song again, Elizabeth thinks about her mother while waiting for the right moment to sing. All of her happy memories, all of her sad memories, and all of her new memories are flashing before her. Once the instruments pick up, the lyrics finally escape her lips. Mother, it's been a while since we last spoke with one another. I know you're watching over me with concern, and I must apologize for taking so long to find the closure. After you passed away, words cannot begin to describe how depressed and lost I was. I didn't know what to do anymore. I missed you so much and lost my courage to sing again. I was scared and weak. Moving to Aquadine to cope with our loss didn't help much. It only made me feel lonely. But on one fateful day, I met a boy. 
Much to my dismay, I learn he is currently living in a similar situation as us. Watching him work so earnestly for his mother is truly ins inspiring. I wish to assist him in any possible way to prevent him from showing the pain I felt after losing you. That is why I chose to sing once more. I no longer wish to feel sorry for myself while he's doing everything in his power to keep his family together. Before long, I realized I'd fe had feelings for him. Ah, They're joyful feelings that are distant from those of family or friends. It's the same joy you felt when you met father. Yep. I hope my sons will reach you, him, and everyone who has supported me, regardless of where they are. I promise I will visit you soon. <laughs> I love you so much, mother. Goodbye. And everyone in the audience gives Elizabeth a round of applause after she completes the song. She looks around the concert hall in awe and remembers how good it felt to sing her heart out. I did it. I finally sang a grand opera house. Thank you, everyone. At this time, I would like to ask the staff to kindly locate sail in the crowd. What? The spotlights dance around the opera house until they eventually find Cell. Everyone in the audience seems confused about what's happening, including the young gondola himself. I will need all the, all the, all the, all the, all the courage to properly convey my things to him. I can do it. Cell, do you remember the last time you brought me here? When you asked whether I enjoyed seeing, I was uncertain and believed I only sang to satisfy my mother. But that is no longer true. Everyone's voices today helped me rise back on my feet when I was down. They all made me realize that even during the most difficult times, I am not alone and neither are you. You and I are very alike, Cell, but we are still very different and I am anxious to learn more about you. Admittedly, I cannot retain these feelings for you any longer. I like you, Cell. I like how smart and mysterious you are. I like how diligent and mature you are. I like the way you laugh. I like the way you smile. I even think it's cute how you despise chocolate. <laughs> wow. I like everything about you. Oh my gosh. Like, such an event like this, it's not surprising that his heart beat is out of control. Cell wasn't prepared for this at all. His face is blushing red, and he's almost tempted to cover it with his beret. <laughs> Many girls have confessed to him before, but none were ever bold enough to do it in the middle of a concert of all places. Everyone in the audience grows quiet as they're anxious to hear his answer. Many of them wonder if he'll finally accept this, a, a girl's feelings. <laughs> Elizabeth is always worried about Cell and tries to help however she can. For once, it feels like a girl genuinely cares about him for who he is. Cell finally looks ready to talk, and Elizabeth braces herself for whatever the outcome may be. Elizabeth, I'm still surprised that you were the same girl I met back then. You are lost in more ways than one, but now you're standing here once again as a new person, and I'm proud of you. You're an inspiration. I like you too, Elizabeth, and I also want to learn more about you. The crowd is feeling all sorts of different emotions as they've just witnessed a new couple form in the middle of a concert. Many of their fans are supportive, while others need some time to take it in. My daughter's been taken from me! I told you to wait until you turned. <laughs> Stop it! Sal and Elizabeth smiled nervously as they could hear her father's clear disapproval all the way from his seat. Ah. After the concert was over, Sal and Elizabeth find some time for a walk. They can see their clear reflec reflections by the edge of the canal. So, how was the concert? It was fun. I've been to a few opera concerts before, but they were nothing like this. Hearing so many people cheering and singing along with you was really exciting. I still can't believe you confessed in front of all of those people though. Please don't remind me. I still have goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Cell and Elizabeth come a little closer as the back of their palms graze each other. They both freeze up for a moment, but Cell tries to break the ice. I never visited Saifula before. What's your hometown? What's your hometown like? When one mentions Saifula, people generally think about its open fields and windmills. I would describe it as a place that preserves much of its nature by taking immense care of its environments and wildlife. Many tourists come to visit its vast gardens, which are decorated with a large variety of flowers and wondrous architecture. Maybe it'll be your turn to be my tour guide. <laughs> I would be glad to. So decides to give Elizabeth a ride back on his gondola, but they take a detour to spend a little more time together. On their way back, they decide to pass through the shore. 
However, none of the Undines greet Elizabeth as openly as the one from before. It's not here anymore. What are you talking about? There was a particular Undine that loves to dance around. I met it last time. Undine? Sorry, am I refer I'm referring to the jellyfish. A voice in my dream told me that they're spirits of the deceased merfolk. Wait, you had those visions too? Yes, I never told anyone since it was just a dream. A voice informed me that the Undines are attracted to people they've met in their past lives. I'm sure anyone would be skeptical if they've heard it. I had similar dreams, so I believe you. Maybe it was worried about you, just like the rest of your friends and family. Everyone has their own way of showing concern for others. Whoever Undyne was, I'm sure it's resting easy now. Perhaps we will meet again someday. So and Elizabeth gaze at the moon for a bit longer before they're ready to head home for the night. Once Sel finishes tours for the following week, he changes before heading over to Elizabeth's house. Alfred answers the door. Hey Alfred, it's good to see you. My apologies, but you have to wait a moment. Uh, Lady Elizabeth is still getting ready. I still have approved of this. I can still save my daughter from this monster. I'm a monster? Sorry to keep you waiting. Shall we depart? I'll never let you take her away from me, you punk. Perhaps if you make an offer with Robin, he may be willing to negotiate. Oh yeah, I'm rich. How much money do I have to throw at you to break up with my daughter? Father! Elizabeth is the best thing that's happened to me. She's worth more than all the money in the world. <laughs> I couldn't ask for a better girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend? Oh, he actually said it. I think I heard your heart crack. <laughs> Robin. How about two billion autos? Two billion? Now that sounds tempting. So do we have a deal? Of course not. Why do I become an object of negotiation? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't being serious. The tension of his family is light and significantly compared to several months ago. <laughs> it may not be a stretch to see that Robin is the best thing that's happened to Lady Elizabeth as well. You have my gratitude, Robin. I only wish your father could see how reliable you've grown. Mr. Rhodes, my mum told me that you covered the rest of her hospital bill. And yes. Elizabeth and her father's expressions change as they realise he has something important to say. If it wasn't for you and Elizabeth... I don't know if I could have paid it off on my own. I can't thank you enough for the favour you've done for us. I don't know how I could ever repay you. You can give me back my daughter and we'll call it even. Father! I was kidding. Anyway, a guy shouldn't look down like that before taking this girl out. Forget about repaying anything. I did because I wanted to. That's all. Thank you. I won't forget what you've done, what you've all done for me. I'd like to thank you as well, Father. It brings me joy that you really do care about others. I just did what I should have done from the start. Now go on before I change my mind. Ha <laughs> ha. Elizabeth gives her dad a big hug before she walks out of the door with her boyfriend. I sounded pretty cool there, didn't I? Sir, do you realize that you just acknowledged their relationship, correct? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I bet you were caught up in the moment, sir. Better him than some other guy. Exactly. Robin's got a pure heart. Alfred realizes, raises an eyebrow as he never thought Charlie's would accept Robin, though begrudgingly. As delusional as Charlie's may often be, perhaps even he realizes how much of a positive influence Robin has on his daughter. Indeed. After purchasing their tickets, the couple waits patiently for their train to arrive. Robin is carrying the picnic basket with his right hand while holding his girlfriend's hand with his left. It feels so recent since I first arrived here, yet so much has happened. Never I'd imagined coming to Aquadine could change my life. When tourists first step out of this station, they can hear the seagulls chirping and smell of the ocean. To them, Aquadine is a foreign town waiting to be explored. This time, it is your turn to become the tourist. I cannot wait to share my world with you. How long is a ride to Sepulum anyway? Roughly two hours. Two hours? We haven't even gotten on the train yet. A train bolts past them as the rest of its tail follows behind. Repeated thumps could be heard with each passing wagon. Slowly but surely the train comes to a halt and opens its doors. It has arrived. Yeah. Ah, That's such a lovely CG right there. Such a wonderful, precious CG. Are you saying you wish to concede the window seat? I'm fine, you can have it. Thank you very much. You know, my father often accompanied me on trains when I was younger, and he used to tease me by hogging the window seat. 
Wow, what a jerk. That's what I love about him though. He always seems to make me laugh in the most surprising ways. Did you know that our fathers were really close friends? Really? I knew my daughter grew up in Cephala, but that's a coincidence. Dad, sorry. I thought the same. After my father visited you, your mother in hospital, he shared quite a few stories about his childhood. One time he valiantly fought off two walls on his own and saved your father's life. It's a miracle how they came out of that predicament alive. You sure he wasn't making that up? Yeah, I'm thinking he made that up. That's a possibility. But he told him with such enthusiasm. That's what a liar would do, so it would convince others. I didn't have the heart to show skepticism, though. Have you ever heard the urge to visit Cephala before? A little. From the pictures I've seen and what my clients tell me, it really does seem like a beautiful town. My father always told me that I should go there at least once, because that's where my dad grew up. He died while I was still an infant, so all I have are stories of him. That's right. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Don't worry. It was a long time ago, and I'm sure he'd be happy to know we're visiting the town. Last night, I was so excited to think about this trip that I could hardly sleep. Ah, Like resting on, rest, resting on your partner's shoulder like that. That's so peaceful in a way. Just as Elizabeth says that, she lets out a small yawn. Her head bops until it finally rests over Robin's shoulder. There's just so much of my town I wish to show you. But I doubt a single trip would be long enough. Looks like she's fallen asleep right away. I was concerned if it was too early for the trip. But it looks like there's nothing to worry about. No matter what happens, I'll be there for her. Two hours fly by and the train finally reaches their destination. Robin wakes Elizabeth up from her nap. I can't believe I can't remember the last time I've been on a train. Unfortunately, the ride was so long though. Well, you're awake during the entire ride. Now I've got some sleep too. I'm actually a bit anxious myself. That reminds me of the tour you gave me around the school. When you led me up the stairs, I was unsure what to expect. But as soon as the door opened, you showed me just how magnificent Aquadine could be. It was truly breathtaking. Now I'll return the favour. My home awaits just beyond these doors. The native Sephirian couldn't hide her excitement and even pulls Robin to hurry along. Ah, <laughs> Lovely. Ah, so this was childhood memories. The moment they set foot in town, large windmills could be seen towering over the buildings in the distance. Before even visiting one of its famed gardens, they could see flowers decorated on many of the houses. Ah, this gentle breeze and this aromatic scent. For a, mere, for a mere touch of this wind, I could tell we are unmistakably in Sephirly. Wow, we just got here and I can already smell the flowers. Wait till you visit a flower field. You've many touched the surface. Aren't you going to introduce yourself, Miss Tall Guide? <laughs> of course. A promise is a promise, after all. Ah. Elizabeth takes a deep breath and imagines how Cell normally acts to prepare herself. Welcome to Cephalo. My name is Elizabeth Rhodes, and I'll be your tour guide for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll gladly answer them. What are your th What? Three sizes. Dear customer, please restrict your questions only to those regarding the tour. <laughs> what are you referring to? I'm confused. Elizabeth didn't even need to tell Robin that they've reached their destination. Countless daffodil petal dances in the wind as legions of flowers are scattered across the entire field. So this is the beauty of Cephala. This is the Golden Sea. Not surprised. When I was really young, my family used to come here quite often. We would play in the fields for hours and even make flower crowns for each other. Of course, we also had many picnics here. Allow me to show you my family's favourite spot. Elizabeth leads him over to a small hill before they lay on the blanket. After settling down, Robin takes out a sandwich and hands it to her. The second food appears in her hands. Elizabeth rips it apart and devours it all, of course. It's just like the first time we had a picnic together. How is it? And of course, as usual. <laughs> oh dear, the roles have definitely reversed here. Usually it's the man doing all the rude behavior and stuff like that, but no, it's Elizabeth who does rude behavior in this relationship. I certainly am listening. Sorry I missed it. What were you saying? Just up ahead, there's another place I'd like to share with you. Follow me. 
After wrapping up the picnic, the couple strolls across the yellow field together until they reach a tall gate on the other side. Elizabeth unlocks it and leads him out inside, I mean. I was supposed to say outside. We're already outside. Robin's eyes widen as he's a, la a lone tombstone sits in the center of this botanic garden. It must be Elizabeth's mother's tombstone. Just like the field, daffodils decorated almost every corner of this space. Is this? Yes, this is my mother's grave. She always loved the Golden Sea, so we thought it was appropriate to bury her here. Robin reveals a small banquet of forget-me-nots from a basket and hands it to her. Here, I had a feeling we might visit her today, so I brought these. That's very sweet of you, Robin. Thank you. Just as Elizabeth is about to change the flowers, she pauses. Ross Ron, these flowers are still fresh. It appears no person was here before us. Looks like there are others thinking about her too. You guys can come out now. Ah, Charlie's, Alfred, a, a lot of, a lot of people. Cameron, Diana, Anya. What the hell? How did you all get here? <laughs> we have arrived. Da -da. Elizabeth turns around and realizes so many of her friends have gathered around to support her. She couldn't believe they would come all of this way to share this moment, but Robin... Robin knew! Father, everyone, what are you all doing here? You're not the only one who needs to move on, daughter. That boy convinced me it's about time that I came back too. Robin knew you would want to visit your mother, so he asked if we all could come pay our respects. You planned this? I thought it would be nice if everyone was here for you. Like you said, you are not alone. That's what friends are for. We even took a different train just to surprise you. Yep, after that we got your dad to leave away. Even Annie was excited to come. Well, I've never been to this town before, so I wanted to draw something new. You've made some interesting new friends, Alyssa. Anyone who's a friend of yours is a friend of ours. No matter what happens in your life, the people who love you will be there when you need them. Just like how you were always there for me. Ah, <laughs> just, just those few words that Robin just said about Elizabeth, about Robin, is just so heartbreaking in a way, but so heart soothing. A single teardrop falls across Elizabeth's cheek, followed by another. Her shoulders tremble as she nearly breaks down, but she doesn't. She tries her best to keep her composure in front of everyone who came out of, for this day, but her eyes continue to water. Thank you, Robin. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. This means the world to me. I'm sorry. I promised myself not to cry anymore, but you'll be fine. We're here for you. After Elizabeth sets the flowers in front of a tombstone, everyone closes their eyes and pays their respects. Mother, you must be delighted to have so many visitors today. All of our friends and families have gathered here to see you. It's been a long time, but there's something I want to say. I'm home. Elizabeth tilts her head and smiles. Ah. Elizabeth root cleared. Ah. That was such a heartwarming thing to go through. Like, really heartwarming to go through. So then, whose route to take next? There's, okay, the indication for whose route we're currently highlighting needs to be more clear. Or rather, I'll just use a mouse to do it, since that's a more clear way of doing it. So, Cameron's route, definitely. So, folks, we have cleared Elizabeth's route in this time around. Thank you all so much for watching. That was definitely a very, very endeavouring experience to go through in multiple ways. It was so heartbreaking, but at the same time, also very enlightening by the different emotions and roller coasters that happened throughout that. Although I think that scene could have been stretched out a bit more, like the last scene, but also the concert scene, there could have been more words and emotions put into it for the magnitude of that situation. But I'm happy with what happened there, but also almost teared myself up when um, the surprise at the very end there came along. It was such a heartwarming surprise as well, just to see so many people rooting for Elizabeth and all that. But now we're going on to Cameron's route. We're going to be doing this in reverse order of the game appearing. So rather than Anya, Diana, Cameron, then Elizabeth, we're going to be doing Elizabeth, Cameron, Diana, then Anya. 
I'm just very intrigued to see the mystery behind the mermaid as the last route to go along. Thank you all so much for watching Seawalls in the next time of Aquadine. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves.